Yeah. How does that how does that scene go in the anime? The uh, if you want to talk about some some cringe, that that was pretty cringy actually. No, you know how nobody else really had like a dialect or anything. They gave him like a super street accent. It was oof. It was a little rough. Is that how they did it? Yeah. Cuz like I mean it, the, it's in like in the sub in the sub he walks up to him and he's just like speaking like a super like he's trying to it sounds like someone speaking broken English. He's like, uh, <laughs> he's, he's like me, mad scientist. Very cool. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and then he like throws his hand out. Oh man. I should have like, I was actually curious while watching that. I'm like, wait, so how do they do this in the dub? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, to be honest, <laughs> but, uh, Welcome to the Anybody's Podcast episode of Steinsgate. Um, I'm Big Dummy Dumb Ooh, Dumb Alex. Alex. I am Jacob, and I am so excited for this week. And uh, we, we've got something special for you here. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely something good here for for everybody. But uh, before we jump into this this very long and detailed summation of Steins Gate, uh, what have you been up to this week, Alex? Um, well, I was anxiously awaiting the uh, newest chapter of One Piece, and it is not necessarily what I was expecting. But I am very did you, in, very interested. Did you get a filler chapter? I did not get a filler chapter. Actually, to this chapter, we uh, the Straw Hats took an L for a second. Um, so, I got some, I guess, as, as, as long as they're wearing that hat, they're going to be taking a lot of L's. I, please, please, please respect the hat. It's literally the name of the crew. Come on. Please. You don't even. You know, when I played, when I played Maple Story in like sixth or seventh grade, I was actually in a guild called Straw Hats and I didn't know it was one piece related. The guild master was named Luffy D. And, uh. So, yeah. So I, I did, did, I did get, not. I guess in a way you're a, you're a fellow member of the Straw Hat Pirates. Well, I left that guild. Why not you... related to One Piece? Sadly, oh. I just I I needed a better guild to guild quest with. Uh, but uh, oh. that's understandable. You gotta you gotta get your quest in. You do. You need to get that guild experience. Get those rewards. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I did uh, start on the show that we're watching for next week, and I have been very much enjoying my time. Ooh. But we'll talk about that no. later. I haven't. Uh, a brief preview, I haven't hated it as much as I thought I would. Well, that's good. But uh, what but, have you? Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I have... Dove in a little further into Doro Hidoro, I read the first volume of the novel Solo Leveling. Which, ooh, there is some interesting stuff in there. Uh, I'm actually very much enjoying it. Uh, it's interesting. It is a, a how do I, I I say this about so many things, but it's just like it's got a lot of elements of like what SAO should have been. <laughs> That's like, like I, I end up saying this about a lot of like uh video game uh, themed animes. This one's not exactly, it's, it's more like video game elements, but they're in a real world. It's not like a video game. It's more like video games get elements introduced into a guy's real world life. It's not really a spoiler because it happens in the first chapter. But, uh, yeah, so that's all interesting. Um, it is quite sad that so many things, like, it, it's nice that SAO sort of inspired a lot of these things, because I feel like it really did uh, play a good motivational factor for a lot of these, like, better SAO-like things we got after. But, uh, 
been pretty good so far. I look forward. I want to read the physical copies, so I'm going to wait for the second part of the novel to come out in 19 days. So, okay. unfortunately, I will not be reading the web novel. I'll be just strictly sticking to paperback, because yeah. that will make it easier to manage. Uh, yeah. Versus binging it all at once. But That's true. Plus, you'll yeah, know like, where you left off on, for sure. Yeah, I think that's actually all I had time to read this week, other than jumping into our next week's episode of uh, Love, Chunibio, and Other Delusions. <laughs> uh, Good show. Um, can't can't spoil my feedback on for that one on this episode, but I've got some stuff to say about that one, too. Okay. But, uh, right on. I definitely have some stuff to say about both of these shows. Um, but Steins Gate uh, came out in April 6th of 2011, um, done by Studio White Fox. It was originally a, uh, a web novel. Uh, did you have, I'm since you said earlier it was your favorite anime, I assume you've seen this before. I have seen this before. I believe I've first watched it sometime around September 2020. Uh, so it was actually fairly recent. Okay. Uh, was that like nine, nine to ten? Yeah, about nine months ago is when I first watched it. Um, I've been wanting to watch it for a really long time, but I was waiting. Every time I have like inspiration to watch something, I want to make sure that I know someone that has seen it before so I can ask them and sort of get their opinions, whether they be good or bad. I've got, like, a little circle of people that I know their anime opinions are shit, or they'll have, like, good opinions, or, like, you know, sort of 50-50. And -hmm. then I'll ask them, and I'll get their thoughts, and then I can sort of gauge it. Might not make my decision based off of whether they liked it or not, but, you know, it'll give me some insight. And finally, I had a a friend that, Thank, thankfully, very big thank you to her because she told me like, yeah, it's it's pretty good. You're gonna have a like, don't abandon it. You know, you need to make it through those first like five to seven episodes before you really get like super invested in why it's one of the best animes of all time. But you know that that was good because uh, I was actually at this time I was watching most of my anime, especially the. Um, subbed anime I was watching. I was watching at the gym while I did cardio because it was just an easy time to fully focus on the screen while I worked out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was easier to do dubs versus or easier to do subs than like dubs when I'm at home and I get distracted a little more easily. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, and I will say that those first seven episodes, I, I feel like they seemed a little rougher because I was at the gym, you know, it's a little higher energy, so stuff will seem a little slower if it's progressing slowly. Because, to be honest with you, I don't know if it's just because I loved it so much, or if it was just because I watched it, you know, laying in bed, chilling this time, but it was a lot easier to get through those episodes this time. Uh, power right through them. I wouldn't say it was particularly hard, because I, I, I knew what I was getting myself into, but I would suggest to anyone that watches this, no matter what, do not abandon it. If you're not if you're not vibing with it uh, in those early episodes, like you you gotta you gotta just stick with it. Yeah, it's like you know that everyone has a different opinion on like when it really picks up from that sort of like slow start. Some people say it was uh, some people say it's like more like episode six or seven other people say like episode 12 but you know regardless wherever that is for you just get through all 24 episodes it's not that long it's not one piece ugh i roll 900 episodes like if yeah, like you can't tell someone, hey, if you're if you're not vibing with One Piece through the first three hundred episodes, just stick with it. But like, it's only twenty four. I mean, I feel you, like you if you just, 24. I feel like you just watch up to Arlong Park, then you can decide. 
Uh, if you, I don't know where that is. In the, uh, that's within the first. The point one. is, it's it's about as long as season one of Hajime no, no Ippo. Pretty long, but fair enough. I, I it just it's 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 worth it. But uh, what about you? I know you you watched it before and. I, I know you gave me your opinions, but I want to. I want you to throw them to the listeners on. This. Oh, oh, you want my you want my full opinions that I gave you? I just want the ones about rewatching it because I remember you specifically sent me a message regarding when, or when you finished about that. Oh, um, yeah. So if if you're listening to this part, um, you probably heard me say I'm a big dummy, dum dum. And that's because I watched Steins Gate up to episode 17, probably about three to four years ago now. And then I just forgot to finish it. Um, and I liked it enough to buy, like, the Blu-ray for it. So I knew it was good, but I never, like, watched that, that final little chunk um, right there. Um, I, re-watching it, I, I did watch it dubbed, mainly. I did switch back and forth between sub, but I watched sub the first time. Um, so I like both versions. I genuinely think that Steins Gate is good. Um, starting at episode one, I was drawn in pretty much immediately, to be honest. It has everything I could like in a show. Um, and I genuinely regret not finishing it. If you did like ever drop it, just restart it from episode one get through it um full 24 episodes fantastic show um really like i have like no negative things to say about steins gate that is a i i really struggled with that actually this episode because like no matter how good something is i want to find something to criticize it on just for the sake of like having it because you know you really don't feel like anything can be perfect. It was so hard to find anything in this that, like, I didn't like. Uh, the only thing I could say that, like, may, like, be, like, questionable uh, may be some of the characters, like, personalities. To, to be honest, some people may just not like some of, like, some people may not like Okabe. Or Daru, or you know, and like you know, you spend a lot of time I, with them, so I can get that feel like that aspect. I can say that I do have one friend that um, she's actually currently watching Steins Gate very slowly. Which this is a terrible anime to watch like over a long period of time, in my opinion, just because there's a lot happening and you want to have it all fresh on the mind, and also since it progresses so slowly. The more slowly you watch it, the longer that progression is going to feel. But, uh, yeah, she's been on, like, episode 8, I think, 8 or 9. Uh, and right now, she really does not like Oka Okabe. But, uh, you know, I, I'm i hoping that she, she grows to love him. I was not the biggest fan of him uh, when I started watching. I'm like, what is this dude doing? We've got a fucking straight-up Larper, just out here <laughs> chilling. Uh, but yeah. So with all that, I think we really need to get into one of my, ooh, one of my favorite parts. Let's let's talk about these openings. Yeah. I, I guess opening. There's one, but we we do have that episode twenty three and twenty four shift uh, to talk about, which. The, the visuals all stay the same, but the music does change, which we can talk about that. But let's talk about this first one. Um, I think Hacking the Gate is a really fucking great song. I I like that song a lot. Um, I, like, uh, yeah, to... I've got to tell. Oh, I've I've got to tell you, I th this is my favorite anime opening ever i love every part of it when they we 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 i one of the things about um was it attack on titan or is the attack on titan was I'm, I'm trying to i'm pretty sure it was attack on titan but it might have been jojo's i'm pretty sure it was attack on titan but one of the ones we did for the last two 
Uh, it didn't do like the. It was Attack on Titan, but so like in anime, it's become more and more popular, and it's something that I prefer. Where they like they do the intro, and then we get the opening, and like uh, after like something cool sort of happens in the intro, so that we kind of get that like cliffhanger. I think they might have done that in a couple episodes of AOT. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Or do they just start it off in AOT every time with the opening? Uh, I'm guessing you might not remember because I know you skip the AOT openings a fair amount. Yeah. Um, about half and half sometimes they'll like bleed into it. But it's but it's it's normally like at the start of the show. Yeah. So like the way that they put it into the sort of um, introductions in the scene, mm. uh, like the the placement that they find for that opening in each episode is just so well timed, um, and then the song it really just fits so well for every episode, and it gets the more like attached we get to the characters, the more like uh, like emotion inspiring the opening sort of gets, and like the visuals are absolutely amazing i love how in some of the episodes the i don't know if you noticed but the like introduction it's a little more distorted uh as they fuck with the world line a little more yeah uh yeah i I really love that Mm. um and then there's a specific note that i have and i have loved this since the first time i watched the anime but that sort of part where like kirisu is like leaning back and then we get like the zoom out where she's like sort of uh, you know the part I'm talking about in the op- opening? Hold on, I'm thinking about it. The visual where she's like leaning back and then she gets like a mirror and then it like zooms out and she's like cloning a cross or something. I think so. Yeah, it I uh, it is that that moment with like the music just it is it is so satisfying. Okay. Hold on. Let me uh, let me pull it up because I want you to know the moment I'm talking about. You know. Okay. This is a very important, obviously, if I noted it. Yes. Okay. Here, go to here in this video. I put that in our little Discord. Go there, and then it's at 109. Or hold on, it's a little before 109. All right. 106. Got it? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. All right. Okay. You you you, you feeling that? Does does that not just give you like such a such a satisfying feeling? Honestly, the whole opening gives me just a satisfying feeling. It all blends together. The whole opening, the is whole thing, it's definitely so... wonderful. But that, like the, just really the whole art, especially that like very beginning part where we have like the gears turning and shit. With uh, I think it's just Ruka, Suzu, Ha, and uh, Moika that are in that part. But that. The visuals of like the gears turning and stuff there just looks so pretty. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do have one thing to say about the ending. The um, outro. Yeah. For the uh, outro, what? um, I forget which episode specifically, but it's the one where Suzaha like cracks through. And like calls Daru. Do you remember that that one? What do you mean calls Daru? Like what? Like during the, like during the the uh, ending, it like interrupts, and it's a uh, Suzaha, and she's like 
talking to Daru about how she's her daughter. Or, yeah, sh about how she's his daughter and she's a time traveler. It's like the episode right before um, spoiler part at the end. I, I don't. On episode 23? Is that what you're talking about? I think so. That that got me. That got me real good. I loved it. How uh, about the, yeah, that's the outro in general, though? This uh, The song and the, the visuals? Mm, I honestly skip the outro more often than not. I just happen to catch that that ending. It's 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 definitely not as hype as the the hacking of the gate part, but yeah. I, I really like it still. I think it's like that like music where the episode ends, like after we've been left on like this like sort of like some of them it's like a mildly like horror filled ending into mm -hmm. a cliffhanger type thing. I feel like the, the feeling of that song hitting, uh like it's really good. Like it, it really gives like a good closing feeling of that. It, it's not like really joyful. It, it's it's pretty thematic, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then visually, it's like pretty cool. It's not again. It's not as like visually intense as the um as the opening, which I would sort of expect. But it's pretty nice. Uh, it's not like too over the top or anything. But really, just that music gives me. Like such a, it it really helps induce like the horror that comes into each of the episodes that come after, like episode uh, is it seven where they the the shit happens? Um, that first like horror moment with Faris. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. From there on, like each time we get that like outro song, it like really let it really like just gives you a second to digest like the horror of the situation and everything with that song going on with it. Mm. So I, I really like it as a thematic choice. It's not like something that I would re, re listen to. And then just the whole soundtrack of Stein's gate really like, um, there's like a couple other like songs that are used for like the emotional shit and whatever. Uh, I don't know if those have a name. I know that they were used. They're used in both AOT and JoJo's, but I did not. I I was not as involved with them because. Uh, actually, were they used? JoJo's has like a uh, like music going on to like sort of amplify the themes, right? Yeah, most shows or do. Might... Okay, what is that called? What's the name of that? Background that music. Have a name? Is that just background music? Yeah, background music like your soundtrack, your OST. Your sound effects as oh. well. I thought it'd have like a more, a more like developed name. But no. regardless, I really like all of it, um, especially that one. I can't remember the name of it. I'm not going to bother looking it up because we we spent plenty of time on the the music so far. But it's like the the one that they play uh, pretty frequently throughout the episodes. I I like it. A lot. It has a name. It's on the soundtrack. But yeah, I like all the music in the show. I think it really fits well with what's going on. Yeah, not gonna lie, Steingate. Steins Gate fucks. Really does. It it hits on a very many levels. You can definitely tell that there was a lot a lot of time poured into all of this mm -hmm. for it to be like so well done. But, uh, yeah, I think we're ready to jump into the plot here. Starting with, uh, episode one. Do you want to take us away from there? Um, I mean, it's your favorite show. If you want to lead the ship, you're more than welcome to. All right. Well, we get a very, in episode one, we get a very fun fun intro very interesting we start out and we think like if you go into this blind you start out and you think that we're in some like dark sci-fi world right uh i don't know how immersed you were in that but it, it, it seems like i was got, drawn like, in a, immediately. A serious... 
yeah, we see like a serious like scientist man and we think that he's it's really just like him versus the world. He's like, you know, truly our our mad scientist. It's he's so serious. He is he's, a mad scientist. He's so, <laughs> he's so committed to the LARPing and it it really just it it draws me in so much and we see him here at this we see him here at this like convention or meeting and we're like what's going on with this man is he is he is he here to fight the is he here to fight everyone is he gonna stop the bad guys from taking over and uh we we sort of we have Myrie here to uh sort of <laughs> yeah we have her here to sort of like bring us down to earth a little but you know we just think she's uh she's like you know uh I was a little confused actually that's the so like the very first time I watched this I was a little confused about what was going on with all of this because you know she seemed a lot less concerned about this organization and all the bad shit they're doing than Okabe yeah. and is it like this just blissful ignorance has has she has she submitted to the organization and okabe is our only hope possibly and, you know they they we have this fun little moment where it, which ends up being super important which is very very fun for a, a time travel themed anime but you know we get Myri getting her metal upa from mm-hmm. the very generous okabe who you know, acts like he he wants to act all cold, so he makes her think that she's not gonna get it. But you know, he lets her have it because Mayuri is an angel, and you know, you couldn't just not give her the Upa that she wants. Absolutely, how can you but, say uh, no? Look at her hat. She's she's just so precious. Yeah, she's but she's baby. Honestly, she's a baby. She, she she really is. And then we get to this like meeting and. The the first moment that you get the suspicion that Okabe might be a little uh a bit he he might not be exactly who he says he is to us in this intro is when he stands up and just yells, uh can can you do the the yell for me the doctor yell I know you've been practicing your Okabe <laughs> uh just, impersonation you just want me to say say his name I just want you to yell the the doctor line that he does uh, you know you know the one. Where he like stands up and yells. Uh, oh, I I can't quote him, but I can quote his name. That's all I remember. Oh, he just, ye- he just uh-huh. yells, "Doctor!" He's uh-huh. like, "Doctor!" <laughs> very. That that moment is like so over the top, and I'm like, "Okay, this yeah, this is uh yeah." Okabe is very over the top. I love it. I love that he like, especially. I like that the voice actor. Just, Really, really, a lot more so in the dub. Really, like plays into a into his persona of Hoenn Kioma, and it's just so it's, so nice. It's so nice to have because, like, so. But yeah, continue. we have that moment, and they sort of argue. We find out that you know, we have to question. Like, is this is this doctor plagiarizing the the famous John Titer? Or, you know, is like, what's going on here? And then we meet Kirisu, who pulls Okabe into the hallway and asks why he approached her earlier, which we've been following Okabe this whole time. He hasn't approached her. So clearly this lady is crazy, but crazier than him. Yeah, they have this little discussion and. Yeah, some stuff goes on at the the conference, and then, you know, we progress through our plot, and Okabe finds that same lady that just pulled him out uh, murdered. Very, very, uh, like, sort of strange, and yeah. you really wonder where they're going with this. Yes. At this point, it's it's a little confusing. Like, what was the purpose of meeting this character, just for them to immediately die is this is this gonna be uh oh what's what's it called Ah, i can't remember the name of it like the you know it doesn't matter the point being uh she's dead yeah so this really freaks okabe out and you know this is our 
this is our mad scientist hero who's going to stop the organization, and he looks horrified. Uh, really brings him back down to earth, and then we just get a jump to where we're outside. He's walking with Mayuri now, and uh, he sends a text message, and something happens. Yes, and this uh, is where I was immediately drawn into the Steins Gate. We get a, a little, like, weird shift effect, and a number pops up on the screen. What does this number mean? Uh, all of this is interesting. And then something has changed, but Okabe seems to be a little confused on what he just experienced. Um yeah. Something just fucking happened in his head, at least. Mm -hmm. But but nobody you know, else seems up, uh, to remember anything. Yeah, it's it's really well. He actually doesn't know that. Oh, yet. he doesn't find. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know that no one's remembering anything yet until uh, a little later when he he gets home and uh, I can't exactly remember. I I think he tell does he tell Daru. About uh, what happens with Kirisu? He asked Daru if he got his text. Uh, yeah, they talk about that. And then he didn't get the text. And, uh, or no, he, he got the text a couple weeks ago. Yes. Um, which we will find out later what happens with that. But, um, there's also some shit, there's some subtle shit with, uh, the phone controlled microwave making bananas into gelatin. Uh, that's a little weird, and we don't really understand the significance of that up to this point. And then at the, I think it's the very end of the episode, uh, he stumbles ac across Kirisu, who is still alive. Mm. Or does that happen in episode two? It's either the beginning of episode no. two or the ending of episode one where that happens. It's the end but of episode guess, one. Okay. And then, is that where the episode ends? Yes. Is it just Kiri's so alive? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we, we meet, you know, clearly we just saw this lady was killed. Mm -hmm. And now she's still alive. So that's a little fucky. Especially since Okabe has just like sexually harassed her since he's so surprised that She's still alive. Um, all of that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so in, in all of these interactions with Kirisu, both in the first time before she died and then now after she has died and reinteracting, we find out that, uh, Okabe is a lot more childish than, uh, we initially thought in our first episode. This man is like a straight up just mad scientist LARPer. And, uh, it's all, that's all interesting. Yes. Uh, um, it's, yeah, uh, we also mean, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, uh, Suzaha, yeah, uh, here in episode two, who was hired by the landlord, uh, Mr. Braun, um, as a part-time assistant at the uh, at the shop in episode two, as well. So that's a pretty fun little interaction. She seems very suspicious of uh, Kirisu as well. Ah, uh, yeah, that was her. No, her suspicions of Kirisu hadn't surfaced in this episode yet. I think her first like big reaction to that, or wait. She just, she gave her a look. Was it? No, the look was when they found the IBN 5100, oh. but, which is in episode four. But I think he might have, she might have been like inquiring or asking questions about her. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. But I know that the, the like big, like look is in episode four where, uh, oh, where, where she, Okabe knows that like something's fucking up with those two. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so, at the towards the end of the episode, Okabe meets a woman named uh, Mocha who fucking takes a picture of him. Like, what a fucking weirdo! Oh, what a babe. Uh yeah. She 
some some may find her to be have the have the traits of the waifu. Uh Alex certainly does. I didn't say but, waifu, um, I just think she's she's hot. What can I say? I like glasses uh, and I like gingers. And she's she's not a ginger. It's like her hair's like blonde. It's like it's like I on my screen it looked kinda reddish. I'll pull up her picture right now. It might be like a light orange, but yeah. red? Like light, it, light. It, it's gingery. very clearly a very, very different hue than. Uh, I was like brown, whatever. Semantics. This hair is actually red. This is true. Her hair color is like more. It's, it's like, almost exactly like mine, actually. It is like is a lighter like brown. A, uh, maybe my. Yeah. Maybe I need to readjust the color on my TV screen. That's possible. I'm gonna do but, that. Um, <laughs> Remind me to do that. It is more like a, a like lightly blondish brown. Yeah. Well, but, anyways. And plus, like, not, she's cute and shy. Don't judge me. And she is a gaslit queen. She does not trust shit. She does not want <laughs> to, like, hand this man her phone. She doesn't want shit. No. Nope. Um, she starts asking him about that. Like, she wants a lot of answers from Okabe, but she does not want to talk to him about shit unless it is related to... So what she what wants she to know. Wants. Yeah. Uh, and um then they experiment a little more with uh the this banana and gel stuff where they make the banana go from the microwave back onto the um the like bundle of bananas, mm-hmm. but still maintain its gelatinous form. So like it's undergone a complete chemical change and then reverted to its previous like point. Um, it's like complete previous point while maintaining that chemical change, which, woo, that is, uh, interesting. Yeah. And then Kirisu arrives at the lab for some reason that, that she just, she just tracks this man down to find out, like, I guess why he would sexually harass her. I guess I'd be pretty curious if someone came up to me and. Yeah, started touching me and said they thought I died. So I could see that. I'm not entirely sure how she found him, mm-hmm. but you know, girl boss gonna girl boss, girl boss gonna girl boss. Facts. But um, now we have Kirisu becoming a lab member. Yeah, what's she? And double O four. Uh, she was double O four. Yeah, and I I forgot to note in here. I actually have two notes in here because they they had went to the Cat Girl Cafe at mm-hmm. this point just to introduce it and woo we need some of those open around here. <laughs> um, and also I thought the banana was a really like cool way of uh, introducing the concept of time travel. Like we're, we get eased into it. It's not like straight up like, hey, let's go back in time. It's very obvious that like Okabe is interested in it, but given that he attended the conference, but like. Yes, and the it's, events of we're episode not just getting, one as well. Yeah, it's it's not like we're just getting like straight up thrown into like you know let's discover time travel. They're they're scientists. They're experimenting with fucking bananas and microwaves. Um, yeah, who would have thought that bananas and microwaves would lead to time travel? Yeah, and then also, uh, woo when. When Okabe and Kirisu interact after no, she's no, no, become no. this call her, member. Call her by, her by her name, Christina. Oh, she is going to hit you with a book. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, their their sexual tension is truly just unrivaled from the, the very beginning. They are, they are arguing. They are, ooh. Yeah, they have a very but, good uh, chemistry between them. Ah, uh, yeah, they definitely, they definitely do. It is, it's, it's not like a, like, I don't know. It might just be because in almost every other anime, there's like, there's like a, a, like a, a very sw- obvious, like one of them's like swooning for the other and the other's like oblivious or like, you know, something like that. Or it's like, they're like sort of, co- you know, you could have like, I haven't finished Attack on Titan, but I feel like Mikasa, or Mikasa and Aaron have some sort of romantic thing go on in the later episodes. And that one's sort of like, you know, she protect, but like 
she's she's not confessing up to those feelings. But this one, it's like they they're they're so argumentative. They they both think that they're smarter than the other. They're they're both like you know scientists, just constant arguing, and it's like you can tell that there is some there is some pent up sexual tension here for sure. Um, but so we get a little further in, um, Kirisu is now helping them with their phone microwave nonsense, uh, or at least to this point seeming like some nonsense. Uh, Mayuri cracks open the fucking microwave <laughs> during one of the experiments and it just fucking, uh, sends an email to the past, which you know, that lets Okabe sort of understand, like, oh, is that what happened? Is is that, uh, like, is that what happened to my fucking text message? Is that why Daru got it three weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, He's starting to put Kirisu it together. is, like, sort of denying this, thinking that it's nonsense, uh, but uh, Okabe wants Daru to hack into the organization. Which, you know, I guess the, the, the best thing you can do if you're gonna follow, if you're gonna try to like pretend to be like ahead of the game and some like nonsense is, you know, call something an organization anonymously and then say like, when an organization that's, you know, wronging you comes up, just be like, oh yeah, that's the organization. So, you know, this man, <laughs> this man knows how to do his LARPing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. He's, He's he's got a plan, but uh, in the process of doing this hack, after they get the IBN fifty one hundred from uh, our our sweet sweet femboy Ruka, femboy uh, extraordinaire, we uh, there. This is a little off topic, but I went to the Steinsgate subreddit and someone got like downvoted to hell. Because they made like a post saying that people needed to stop misgendering Ruka because it's very obvious that uh, Ruka is a, a trans female, and I was, I'm like, wait, the the show is the one that dictates this, so like I was so confused on why they would get mad at the fans for following the pronoun usage of the show. We can get into that when some stuff happens with that in, like, episode six, I think. But, uh, yeah, they find out that CERN has literally killed people doing what they're doing with bananas. Yep. Because, you know, I, if you turn a banana to gel, it's not really very good. If yeah. you turn a human to gel, they're probably not going to be alive anymore. More than likely not. At least, um, the, at least bananas will grow back. It takes a while to grow a human. It does, but, uh, so they figure that out, and, um, oh, I got the timeline wrong here, because Daru actually hacks them, and they get the IBN 5100 after mm -hmm. that to hack further, but, yeah, so they do that. I, I guess none of that's super concerning, but it, it is, there's, like, a progression of how they find out that Ruka has the IBN 5100 from Faris because he like her Faris's dad like donated it to the shrine for I don't understand why of that either they reference that in the anime of like why would you donate an IBN 5100 or why would you donate a fucking computer to a shrine but they never answer that question so true but throughout this I feel like since we have these like introductory episodes that they're not going like it, they're not, like, unbearable, but they do have a good amount of, like, comedic moments in here to sort of, like, ease the fact that we're being introduced to a lot of things. And, you know, we're going to have to patiently wait to see where this goes. There's a lot of fun little comedy. I got a few little chuckles out of the stuff happening here with Okabe and Kirisu and teasing each other and Daru being fucking absolutely disgusting and violating our innocent Myri. Yeah, Dar making her say odd things about bananas. Alex, could you say that uh you turned my banana to gel? 
You turned my banana to gel. Cool. But, um... <laughs> I don't remember when, but in one of these episodes uh, around here, I think it's episode five or six, but uh, Okabe sees some jello, and it fucks with him because of the shit that he saw when they hacked into CERN. And we get to see a little more of, like, the emotional toll that this is going to take on, uh... On him. Yeah. And then also, when they're bringing the IBN 5100 in, uh, I re- and, um, Suzu, Suzuha looks at Kirisu weird. Uh, Okabe asks her about it, and I, uh, where is it? Yeah. She, like, he asks, like, if something happened in the past with them, and she, she is just such a clever girl. She's like, oh, no, no, nothing in the past. And I'm like, oh, that's that's funny wording now that I know what happens with all this. Yeah, nothing um, Nothing happened yet. Yeah, but, um, so we get into this sort of, uh, they, they discover the sort of, like, way to make D-mails happen, um, and they start sending them off. Uh, with experiments, um, sort of like breaking down what they can do with these, since they can only send, I think, thirty six, uh, thirty six uh, English or like uh, Roman alphabet characters and yeah. uh, eighteen, whatever the Japanese characters are called. Um, Kanji. Is that what it's called? Pretty sure they can only send eighteen of. They can only send 18 Japanese characters. <laughs> Either way. Whatever they're called. But, um... So they start fucking with D-mails. I think, uh... Oh, there's some shit happening here with Mocha, like, invading their privacy. Just jumping up in being like, Oh, you got an IBN 5100 now, do ya? Oh, yeah? Um, which is... Sus, but, you know... If you're as attracted to this lady as Alex is, you'd probably just let her have it. Um, She's about a solid but, uh, 7.5. Ooh. Is that all it takes to get your IBM 5100? I didn't. I probably wouldn't give her my my IBM 5100. That's that's fair. There's a lot of that's, there's a lot of power in that. But um, so Daru does some updates on the shit and then they they do an experiment by sending some lottery numbers uh in which oh no poor the way Ruka. That this is, yeah so before they do the d-mail experiment ruka brought them a watermelon and then they send the d-mail and then the watermelon's gone which is how like okabe sort of knows that uh the world line changed um Yeah, which I was, think is what happened. Yeah. yeah, and it was freaking him out a little bit because it was so instant. Like he wasn't expecting it to happen at all. Yeah, and he was not rich, by the way. Which, you know, or he was actually a little hesitant, so he wouldn't have gotten rich. I, how much is? I, I looked it up when I did it. Seventy or seven hundred thousand yen to U.S. dollars. Okay, so he he was gonna settle for the prize of like six thousand three hundred dollars. You know, a very a very humble uh, Okabe. But, uh... Very. Because he didn't want to change world lines too much if it worked. Yeah, he didn't want to fuck with too much. He didn't want to draw suspicion. Um, especially since they're investigating CERN. Uh, he didn't really want to draw their attention too far by winning the lottery. Uh, being the mad scientist Hoi and Yoma. But, uh... Yeah, so he gets that. Um, Ruka comes back later and is like, oh no, I'm so sorry. You gave me the winning lottery numbers and I fucked them up. To, at which point this confirms to Okabe, like, oh yeah. Uh, the shit, like, or the the D-mails work. But for some reason, he's the only one that remembers, like, that they did the D-mail. Which we find out is his secret power the reading Steiner. 
Self-named. Um, it is self-named. Uh, or, yeah, because John Titor didn't. Yeah, yeah, it was him. Okay. So, but yeah, a lot of this information that he gets out of this at this point uh, ends up being from John Titor, who we will find out the identity of later. But John Titor lets him know that he's the chosen Messiah uh, who can bring the world beyond the 1% divergence and shift the world line to remove them from this dystopian future. Um, so they let Mocha send a D-mail, which they then go to a new world line again, but only uh, Okabe remembers. Mm -hmm. uh, and she doesn't tell them what the D-mail is either. Well, she tells, she sent we don't find that out later, but she tells them what at least one of the emails she sent was, because uh, she said she was just going to say to get or not to get a new phone. But we will find out later that's not the only email she sent. Uh, then we have uh, Ruka, who overheard the shit about wanting to get the. Um, or overheard them doing the emails, and now Ruka wants to utilize some shit about changing a diet so that Ruka can be born as a girl, because for some reason, uh, in at, at least in 2010, which to, it takes to at least in 2010, but I know the anime came out in 2011, but in 2010, uh, we have the interesting predicament where at least in the, the Eastern world, it would make more sense to rewrite the world line to become a girl rather than just to become a trans woman. Uh, I mean, very, very interesting. Uh, I think given the current context of the show, it's more practical for Ruka to just send the message to be I mean, born their preferred it would gender. be. It would be more practical in general, like, you know, even if you, like, it would, it would be easier if you could rewrite it to have the, like, proper, uh, biology to align with your gender. Um, but like, at the same time, it, it's like, it, it, at no point has she identified, I guess she still is under 18, so, you know, it could be in the future plans, but. That's always just been an interesting thing to me is like, you know, Ruka, there's other paths, even like, you know, since the spoiler for later, we do end up in a world line where we have to revert this. You, well, that's there's it. other paths, Ruka. Yeah. But, um, anyways, so now everyone wants a D-mail. Just everyone wants to fuck with the world line. Okabe really should have just put his foot down at all of this. Because yeah, now Faris wants scientist. to send one. I mean, yeah, he does want to experiment. But, like, especially with Faris, who was like, oh, no, I'm an innocent girl. You can't read my text messages. Like, we're talking about the fucking future here. Um, But... Yeah, there is some discussion with uh, Okabe and Kirisu where they talk about the butterfly effect um, of each of these D-mails. And um, they also find out that the IBN 5100 is gone now, uh, which is sort of like a horrific type of thing, the way they play it, because like, yeah, Okabe they... doesn't notice, and he's like talking to everyone, and he's like, what do you mean we ever fucking act CERN? We all saw this shit, didn't we? And it's, you know, now Okabe is getting gaslit. It's, it's but very, he, it happened. He very saw it. sad. And hold on, let me catch up with my, with my notes of all this. Um, okay, I don't think I missed anything in the notes yet. I do think the, the, the concept of all this, like, time travel altering stuff has been really cool up to this point. It's been really unique. 
there's a lot, a lot, a lot of time travel sci-fi stuff out there, and I really don't think any of it's done it the same way that Steins Gate has, um, where they're like literally using text messages to alter the the world line and then progress all this shit. I think it was a really unique way to um, talk about a, a sci-fi topic that's very like um, yeah, it's very hit or miss with a lot of garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of time travel garbage out there. Uh, everyone wants to make the next Back to the Future, but but you gotta um, you gotta find a good way to do it. And I think Steins Gate does a really good job with with it, along with showing like yeah. the effects of what they're actually changing in a practical way. For sure. So yeah, he he agrees to. Let Faris send a email in exchange for some info about the IBN fifty one hundred, which he really doesn't get much of. Uh, so not really a worthy trade, given what this email does. Which holy shit, the fucking horror of this! He, he lets Faris send a email. It doesn't seem like anything's really changed, and then we are diving into the back uh, or diving into the fucking uh we go back into the town and it's it's all gone everything's gone fucking uh Mayuri and Daru remember it completely differently um and Okabe's just sort of standing in the town looking around and everything's different and at this point he realizes like oh Kirisu's right the butterfly effect it makes a lot of fucking sense uh, there's a lot of like, and this is like that first sort of episode where the outro, uh, theme really fucking hits with the, yeah. the sort of moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also after this, Okabe, they, they, they waited a couple episodes, which was a kind of cool choice since we've been finding out all these changes instantly. And it seemed like Ruka's message hadn't changed much because you know, on a daily basis, you don't really ask someone, like, hey, what you packing down there? Um, True. But, like, so, Okabe finds out that Ruka is a girl. This is really just his complete... Yeah, no, there's one more thing bad that happens after this, but yeah. this is, like, nearing the low for Okabe, where he just straight up fucking grabs her by the pussy. Yeah, not and, very um, poggers, Okabe. It's not very poggers. Yeah, like, so we do not endorse sexual assault on the antibodies. We are we are very anti sexual assault. Yes. But um Yeah. Uh also this gets Okabe beaten the shit out of by Kirisu where he gets hit with a book multiple times and has to sit on his knees for an hour, which oh god, if you've ever been on your knees for a really long time on a hard surface I, I know you have because of our our past working in the, the the good old theater shop, but man, that shit fucking does not feel good. Does not. Probably, especially if you're not actively doing anything, you're just sitting there. That is not gonna. Zero out of ten would not recommend. Poor, poor little Okabe's knees, but he did kind of deserve it after. Yep, he definitely. What did. he did. Yep. 100%. I really think there would have been better ways to go about that than just straight up fucking a crotch grab. I was, I was very shocked at that moment. Yeah. But, uh, well, it was interesting, I guess. Um, and now we sort of have, uh, uh, some weird stuff going on. Suzuha is having a farewell party. Um, Okabe gets a really fucking creepy, threatening text message, which oh adds my another God. horror element. Oh, the to fucking all of this. head, dude. The... Oh yeah, the, well they they started with the fucking Jello. Yep. And then they sent him like a picture of the fucking creepy like baby doll head or something. Yes. And um, yeah, all of that's really weird. Oh, we didn't um, even talk about Mister Alpaca. I'll pack a man. Oh, I was just gonna. 
I I don't understand the like. Do you understand the thematic purpose of that? No, but I thought or it was. Is there... I thought it was just really creepy, but like cute. <laughs> I think it was just so to show in... that like they were already being watched. Yeah, they just have a fucking alpaca on a screen, and they just talk to him and like ask him questions. <laughs> he's gonna answer. He um, might, dude. Pretty sure he's working for CERN. But yeah, uh, and then at some point he realizes that he first experienced his reading Steiner when he was like a child. Um, Suzuha says something about uh, fucking or Suzuha ends up leaving where he has to send a email to make her sort of stay so they can have the party or whatever mm -hmm. and um, yeah this is this is all getting sort of like we, we've been we've had like 11-ish episodes now and we have been overloaded with so much information like, this is the sort of point where, like, at this point, if you're not paying very close attention, you're going to miss a lot of shit, um, which is probably why you ended up abandoning it the first time. No, 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 no. I paid attention. I legit just forgot to press play, like, because I fell asleep after 17 because I was tired and I woke up and I don't know why I just started a different show. Oh, man. Yeah, it, that, that upsets me. It was just an accident, man. It's, it but feels so bad. Now, uh, Okabe sort of discovers that um, the TV in Mister Brahms' shop is what's enabling the phone microwave, so that 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 because that TV has to be on or the demails don't work. Mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. Another layer to this super complicated process, and Kirisu has. Her little girl genius moment, uh, she has many of those actually, but this one is her her breakthrough. This is the thing that would make her an essential resource to the world line as it is at the moment. Um, where she brainstorms how to do what is called what they call a time leap, which I thought was super fucking cool. Um, the concept of like sending your compressed brain waves to your past self. Like, yes. That I, that is such a unique, like, time travel concept that I have never heard in, like, any sort of, like, sci-fi type thing or anything. Yeah, because like, they're always so concerned about transferring your body there. It's never just like, oh, if we were already there, could we just transfer our consciousness? Yeah, and that was, that was really cool, especially, like, with, um... Just all of this, but uh, so Okabe has to go and get some fucking parts. Uh, he talks to Myri about some shit because you know you gotta you gotta ease precious little Myri, or else she will get very sad because she does not like being left out of the loop, even though she doesn't understand what the fuck they're ever talking about. No, she just wants to be there. I mean. Yeah, she deserves to be there, truly. She is she is what has made Okabe redeemable to this day. Uh but um yeah, some shit goes here where uh Suzuha tells uh Okabe that Kirisu worked for CERN. Kirisu is like, What the fuck did you just say to me? And they just we find out why Suzuha allegedly has these problems with Kirisu. Mm -hmm. um, all of this is very confusing. Uh, Okabe is getting more threatening text messages and shit, which is so fucking creepy. And, you know, he doesn't want little Mayuri to get hurt, so he runs home. And, uh... Yeah, Daru also lets them know that it seems that CERN has granted them further access, but, it, you know, he doesn't know, it, it should, CERN shouldn't know that they've accessed stuff, because he did not leave a trace. Right. But, uh... But they do. I feel like it, it's let on that Okabe 
is probably su- like Okabe is super concerned about this and doesn't want to talk about the text messages, but it's like he knows that CERN knows because he's getting these texts. Mm-hmm. And they're making shit open. Like, like all of this is super interesting, but they utilize CERN's ability to compress uh, shit so that they can make the time leap machine. But uh, since Okabe is now super concerned about these text messages and CERN giving access, he says, "No, we're gonna we're gonna go public. We're we're gonna make an IPO." And uh, so that shit goes down. Um, yeah, we've got now we have this whole weird shit. There's a bomb threat on TV. Uh, Suzuha has. Completely fled, um, and now some shit goes down. And I t- tell me what happens here, Alex. Um, well, I'll cue the sad music. They are having a party um, at the lab, and a bunch of people bust down the door after such a lovely day. Really, you know, they're just having a nice little party. Suza just left. Here comes some fucking people with some masks and some guns, busting down, breaking shit, telling them to put their hands up. And then after they got everybody all lined up, who comes in behind these masked people? None other than Little Miss Melika. And that is that. Yeah, that gets that's some betrayal right there. And she it, she then shoots. Uh, I believe she shoots Mayuri, actually. She does, and one of the saddest moments for me. I mean, like, in any in any anime, like even though, like the later episodes sort of build on it because you know immediately he goes back in time, so it's yeah. not as sad as some of these uh like irreversible deaths, but. Oh God, she is too innocent to be shot. We have to see her, her little, her little delicate self covered in blood with her broken little stopwatch after she was just staring at it. Her last little relic from her grandmother. It's so sad, man. I know you said this one didn't hit you hard as emotionally, but like, no, not really. It's I was more just like, oh fuck. <laughs> Because, like, it felt so... This, like I, I didn't feel maybe sad. Maybe this is how you felt when Caesar got got, but... Maybe. Ooh. Maybe. I guess... Yeah. I guess it was more... Um, it's probably more how I felt with the rim death um, to Beetle Goose whenever she's just getting thrown around the cave. That one hurt Didn't me. Didn't know that happened, but I yeah, that's like a, you just spoiled that for me. That's in season one. Oh, you mean the part where they reverse it? Well, yeah, because he dies afterwards. Okay, I thought you meant like later this happens like permanently. No, like, no, man. no. They still, Fuck. nobody else still re- still remembers her except for Subaru right now. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fair. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, do you want to cover the second half? I feel like I've done a lot of talking now. I was, I was just listening to you, um, talk about it, to be honest. Because I know, I know that you love it, and I don't want to, I don't want want to mess it up for you. I, I do really love it, but, uh, okay, so... Yeah, and up to this point, you know, Kirisu and Okabe have also developed their relationship a lot. It's really cute when they, like, talk at the playground, and they're, like, a little more... They're, they're like, growing a little closer. Yeah. Um, but now we enter Okabe traveling to the past, and all of this is also just super interesting, uh, what's going on here. Right, uh, because he wants to find yeah. a way to prevent that from happening again. Pretty much right after uh, Mayuri gets shot, um, Suzuha busts in to create just enough of a distraction for Mr. Okabe to utilize the newly finished time leap device 
so that way he's able to go back in time and try to figure out a way to prevent this from happening or figure out why it happened. Um, yeah, and we get to see him redo this a lot. Um, there's like a super cool moment where, uh, what is it? Myri, one of the times she dies, he, we get like this super cool animation where it's like black and white and he's running back to the lab and it's like so intense. And he just, he keeps having to repeat this saving Myri, um, thing. And just all of yep. these time leaps are so intense. They're, they're really um, mentally draining for him because Myri means so much to him and he can't really talk to anyone about it. Because yeah, no one like, no one remembers. It's so like sad. And it's probably very taxing to have to keep explaining this over and over and not being able to tell like everyone why. Because he keeps having to like cancel the party um, over and over, and like mm -hmm. you know, Myri is looking really forward to this because it's like, hey, we're having a party for doing all this shit that I'm like scared of and not having to do. Yay, Tuturu. But um, yeah, but like I cannot imagine having to watch the most important person in your life just die over and over again while you like hopelessly try to save them repeatedly. Um, and coming and, very close several times. Yeah, so eventually there's like a point where he uh, ends up talking to Kirisu about all this and she like gives him a little motivational speech uh, after he's explained it all. And um, I think this is the part where uh, he says to Tell her, like, if if you ever want to confirm that you've time leapt, just let me know that what I'm craving my, right now is my own personal fork, which I don't know what the fuck that means, and they never really explain it beyond, well, I've got I'm my assuming... own personal spoon. I want my own personal fork now. And... I'm assuming since she's, she's probably, you know, she did live in America for a long time. I'm assuming eating with chopsticks isn't as natural to her as it could be. I mean, yeah, that's that's fair, I suppose. But we get her little adorable impersonation of Okabe, where she does the little Hoin Kyoma, and then she like laughs, and it's 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 such a cute moment. I I really love that. She ends up doing it later as well, but her little impersonating laugh of uh, the great Hoin Kyoma is really yeah. just such a moment, but um, really doing it for you. he ends up, yeah, so he ends up learning that uh, the lab was targeted by CERN because I don't know what the fuck the plan was, but he tried to like fuck with Mocha, knowing that yeah. she's like this fucking gun wielding badass, and he. What the fuck was that little like toy gun he tried to threaten her with? I forget. It was one of the. Gun. It was one of the it's future weird. labs gadgets. Yeah, I forgot it was which one, of one though. Future gadgets. It looked like a fucking like water gun or like a bubble yeah. blaster or something. It did. But, um. Yeah, they do that, and none of this is like it. It's it's all sort of helping, but uh, it's all kind of like either getting him information to, for him to use later on or just pushing back the inevitable. Yeah, but so Suzuha eventually helps them and lets them know that uh, in order to save Myri, he needs to escape the, the attractor field, which is causing the same event to happen uh, in a different way because it, it like, you know, the world line doesn't care how this happens, but it, it, it's going to happen. And they need to um, cross that 1% divergence point. Um, mm -hmm. At some point here, I I think it's, yeah, it's pretty close to around here that she ends up handing him this little device. And this device, the numbers on it, look very similar to something we've been seeing every time they send a D-mail or time leap. It's yeah, the, we actually the divergence saw, we, number. That yeah, we actually saw up. it... Uh... We saw it all the way back in episode one 
as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, she kind of explains that uh, where her time, because she shows them their time machine. She shows that she's the great John Titer. Um, gives them all this sort of information. Um, and I'm checking to make sure I don't have any notes on this up to here. Yeah, and then they have to. Yeah, fix I don't have. The... I don't have anything. I don't have anything for a minute. Okay, so we can just. So. Uh, yeah, they got to fix the time machine. Yeah, we get Daru in here because he's going to fix the time machine for everyone. Uh, oh, we we have the search for Suzuha's father, which I thought was very cute. We do have that because my oh yeah, I was like, God, fucking Mayuri ends up like. They they have a search for her father, and Mayuri just decides, like, hey, we know he was wearing this pen. I'm going to lie and say some girl was kidnapped by a fucking guy wearing this pen. That'll do it. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ, this is a little dark for you, Mayuri. Like, you know, your heart's yeah. in the right place, but what the fuck? The lab members are running out. This is also where we get that interaction with the uh, with the street vendor. Yeah, we do get that interesting interaction where uh, Okabe does his best American impersonation. Uh, very interesting to see that, for sure. Yes, but, yes. Um, yeah, we end up finding out not too far from here uh, through Mayuri's genius deductions and all this that Daru is actually Suzuha's father. And, um, which is good for him. That's a little weird because he's a fucking pervert and has been sexualizing this woman since he saw her, as he does with all women. Um, man's down bad. I'm not going to make excuses for him. I mean, you know, he's, he's Daru. You, you take him how he is. He's, he fixed the time machine. Um, yep. So, they fix the time machine. Uh, Suzuha is going to go back in the past, uh, and it's it, it it gets so dark from here. It gets so fucking dark. Um, yeah, real dark, real fast. Yeah, there's like some shit that goes on. We find out that like she knew Mister Brom. Um, she like fucking killed herself. Uh, delivered through a note. Uh, well, actually, she delivered a note that literally just said, I failed over and over again. And then he, like, talks to Mr. Brom, and Brom's like, oh, yeah, she killed herself. Um, and, God, that fucking letter combined with repeatedly watching Mayuri die. Like, oh, it's too yeah, much for me. I put a little sad face in my notes. Yeah, it was very rough. Um, yeah, so despite the fact that her going back in time changed the divergence, it didn't solve anything because, you know, she failed to get the IBN 5100, uh, because yep. of some shit, uh, but it's all really dark, and at this point, Okabe realizes he's gonna have to revert every change he made, um, as far back as possible to undo all of this, which yes. starts with Farisa's email, which he doesn't know what that said. So he has to go talk to her. They end up fucking running from some, what the fuck was hat? This is the weirdest part of the anime. They're like fucking running from some like people at a Pokemon tournament that are trying to like kill Faris cause she's so good at Pokemon. Um, yeah, pretty much. She's too much of an epic gamer. Yeah, Okabe like takes her to where her uh the the cat made cafe used to be, um, mm -hmm. and it ends up making her recall memories. So he finds out that even though he has the reading Steiner, if he can like bring someone close enough to where they previously had some shit happen in the past, um, they can he can bring those memories back out. So. You know, 
he makes her remember the email that she sent, but she doesn't want to undo it because it turns out that email uh, actually is what saved her father from dying, which is super. All of this is so fucking dark, man. Like now we have to choose like between saving Mayori or her saving her father, which is such a rough decision. But you know, she ends up caring for Okabe. There's also some weird like. Faris, like, uh, I don't know, the way that, like, Faris sort of, like, romanticizes Okabe with, yeah. like, no further depth is very confusing to me. Yeah, you and remember it's, like, whenever I uh, said that Steins Gate kind of became, like, time travel to save the waifus? Yeah, but, like, we're not this saving is... Faris at any point, and it's, like, he doesn't I... like them. They just like him, and it's, like, know. you know, Okabe is great, but, like, why? They make Faris seem like she's like this. I, I can't... Because I guess the only person romantically interested in her from what we've seen is like Daru and, you know, obvious reasons why she'd turn that down. So I, I guess... I guess if you're hanging out with Daru and Okabe, the, the choice is obvious from there. Yeah, truly the lesser but, of two evils. Yeah. But, but it's uh, like... Can, I can, can see... I I, I was gonna. Say, I can see the romantic attraction for like Kirisu because you know they're both scientists. But like, what is made girl Pokemon player? How is that one coming? Uh, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a route uh, in a game. Somewhere. I I will say I'm so glad that like Myri doesn't have like a a romantic attraction to Okabe and and here because like I feel like that would have really just completed the harem and oh did you not get the the subtext there cuz i definitely the picked sub- up some sub yeah i definitely picked up some subtext that myuri would be like okay in that type of relationship with okabe they 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 he's th- she's his little sister what you got to have your emotions watch, watch your steins harem. gate 0 watch steins gate 0 <laughs> okay okay i'll watch steins gate 0 that's actually covered in there they they're, they're very happy with their dynamic. Love that for them. But yeah. Um so now we've got to undo some more emails. Uh so we get to Ruka and um ooh this part is so sad. Ruka's feelings are are so sad all throughout here. Um she like basically confesses her after basically Kirisu lets uh, Okabe is like a blind idiot, so Kirisu has to like let him know like, hey, she's like obsessed with you. Do you realize that? This this woman is in love with you, and even even when she was a boy, was in love with you. Um, so she doesn't want to go back to being a boy because that makes her love seem even further um, more unobtainable. Even though she it, she seems to find it pretty unattainable now as well, um, but they go on a little date. Uh, Okabe does the classic. This is a little a little cheesy, but they do the thing where it's like you know the the weird guy becomes a, a different person on the date, and then it's like, oh wait, she wanted to go on a date with me because I wasn't like other boys. We get yeah. that classic thing. It's not like it's not like trope. anything like detrimental, but it is a little uh a little predictable um here. Um but you know <laughs> after their bad date one they go on good date two point which basically involves Okabe passing Ruka around like they're hanging out on any other day. To fucking swing the sword to be the shrine maiden, <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. I guess better than nothing. Um, yep, it's it's cute, I suppose. But yeah, so they reverse that. Uh, Ruka is a boy again, and now we have to reverse Mocha's email, and this is fucking. This is fucked. <laughs> Mocha like. He goes and finds out oh. she commits suicide. 
So he's got to oh go back God. earlier, and he, like, meets up with her, and he beats the living shit out of her. This is so fucked up. Oh, my he, God. Like, that that was hard to watch. That whole that whole episode was so hard to watch, man. You know, she like was, like, breaking. Wife would get the shit beat out of her while she emotionally breaks down and fucking... God, I was... I, I will say, I I, when she's, like, beating on the door, and he's, like, leaning up against it, and she's, like, yelling... Her voice is like so terrifying there, and like yeah. she just keeps. She's repeating, so she's like, so desperate. She's so desperate. Yeah. Like she she is like she's cracked. I know you didn't watch the the sub, but at least in the sub, like the voice acting there was so good with like the emotion was, behind it. It was really good. I thought it was pretty. I I thought it was done well in the dub, at least. But, uh, so yeah, we get through there. Uh, it's so fucking, so fucking dark, but, yeah. uh, oh, he ends oh, up sending we the get message in... to, he, what were you going to say? Uh, go, oh. go ahead. Well, he ends up sending the message to not replace her phone and it, it fails. And it's yep. like, oh no, what? Um, so he finds out she sent another message. And he tries to undo that one now after beating the shit out of her even more. And, you know, that doesn't work either. Uh, after he finds out, like, what the message said, and he, like, gives her a fucking complete, like, moral breakaway where he fucking, like, tears her apart and is like, listen, FB is not coming back for you. I've seen yep. you kill yourself over this. Which is so fucked, but He's not yeah. able to undo it because she won't trust the message to like that it's a trap unless it's from FB himself or Her, herself. herself. I think we we think herself. yeah we think we think that to this point, but um. So we go back, and we got to find FB. So he reverse tracks the IBN fifty one hundred to find out that FB is none other. That Mr. Brom, his landlord. And Which this... what a mind fuck that was, to be honest. That I, was uh, not expected for me at all. No, not a single bit. But, um, yeah. So, I'm sure you got a little teary-eyed here, but we have to watch Mocha get fucking shot in the face by yeah. Mr. Brom. Yeah, who then gives uh, a little, little, oh, a little speech and says, oh, little, I. He gives a little, a little empowering what? speech here. Yeah, um, and then, he, then he ends it on a, oh, but how can I live uh, to help my, for my daughter if I'm like this? Yeah, he kills himself, himself to keep CERN from tracking down his daughter and fucking killing her. And, man, the saddest thing about all this was watching Nay, like, sitting at the breakfast table by herself, knowing that her dad's not coming to eat the breakfast that she made for him. We just yep. see that little plate sitting there, and, like, yeah, he's and, not gonna eat that. Yeah, and this is the world line where Suzuha, like, helped helped him out whenever he, like, really needed it as well. Oh, yeah, because we actually skipped that, but, uh, they end Okabe ends up doing, like, a slight world line change to where instead of killing herself, she, like, died of uh, natural causes or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, she, and it ended up that, like, she saved Mr. Brahm's life after that world line change. So, he, like, really betrayed her by yeah working with CERN. Um, but, uh, yeah, we get that. Now he gets the... Um, IBN 5100 or some shit, uh, finally, after, uh, er, right? Because that's the last one they, yeah, that's the last one yeah. they have to do. Um, well, for now. Yeah, and then, uh, at the very end of, I think, episode 20? Yeah, it is episode 20. At the very end of episode 20, we have a realization, and I, I'm assuming... The first time I watched this, this is not something that I had considered, and I'm assuming you didn't either, but Okabe realizes from a subtle reminder from Kirisu that she's not really thinking about when she says it, but she sort of like, like she doesn't think of the implications, she just sort of thinks of it like a, a sort of sly joke, 
But like when we go back to this world line where Myri gets to live, that's the one where Kirisu died. Yep. Uh had I, uh, you, I had you realized that up to this point? I did initially whenever uh, I got to the episode uh, where they mentioned, like, oh, we're going to have to redo everything. I was like, everything? But then that means Kurisu died. And then, like, immediately afterwards, I was like, they're not going to, they're not going to kill Kurisu. She's, she's too good of a character and, like, too much of a fan favorite character to actually kill off. Well, the anime does end at episode 24, so they could really kill whoever they wanted to. I mean, um, once it's over, it's like, you know. I, I mean, she's but alive at the end of I would imagine, yeah, I would imagine if she died at the end of it, you'd have, like, more sad content out there like we do about the fucking FMA dog and little girl. Oh, is there sad content for them? Have you not seen, like, all the fucking, like, memes and shit where people... Oh, fucking... I've, I mean, I, I mean, I've seen the meme, and I've tried to watch FMA several times, but I just cannot get into it. Have you not gotten? Have you Have you at least seen the part where like he merges his daughter with the dog? Yeah, no, I watched all of the original yeah, Full Metal there, Alchemist. I just haven't watched Brotherhood yet, so I guess there's a lot of like emotionally tied memes to that scene, and I assume with Kirisu being such a favorite character, we'd have yeah. those kind of we'd have that kind of content out there. That's but true. um, now Okabe doesn't want to do it. He's going to try to find some way to save Mayuri in this world wide. Which he, he's not. You can't fucking do that, Okabe. We we've been over this. Like how many fucking times we gotta we gotta go over this? Yeah, but um, there's... he tries one more time to save Mayuri, and instead he's like, "I'll kill myself. That'll save Mayuri." <laughs> which like, you know king shit on that one but also him trying to kill himself in that instance then ends up being where it like causes Myri to die because she tries to push him out of the way of the car and I'm like man this is this gets worse every fucking time <laughs> yep but um yeah so then Okabe and Kirisu go back to where Kirisu was initially stabbed and she like recalls being stabbed and shit too. They're like chilling up there. They're having a cute little moment. Uh, they're getting real, real. Oh emotional. no! Oh, the confessions. Yeah, um, they're up there. She like stitches up his coat. Um, it's it's all really sad, and I'm like, it was very cute. Oh, I did put in my notes here that the realization that like Okabe will have to kill Kirisu if he has to save Myri was like such a fucking moment because like mm -hmm. that end of episode thing with like the horror elements, all of the horror elements in this are great, but like that's another great one where we're like at the end of the episode and he like realizes that and it's like it's it's so fucked up, but yeah, they have some cute little moments on the. It like fucking rains or some shit. They they're all like, she stitches up his coat. They have some cute little shit, and then we get their their big love confession. Uh all of this is probably my favorite romantic scene in any anime. They're just they're, they're both so socially awkward. It's it's great. Um, like. You know, neither of them wants to, like, do a full-on confession or anything, but, uh, yep. they end up kissing. It's very cute. Okabe ends up s stealing a second one, because he's like, man, I, I really gotta make sure that I remember this. It's yeah. gotta be better than that one. But, yes. uh, and then, uh, he goes Probably back. Probably knows Kurisu's first kiss, too. Oh, yeah, and apparently it wasn't Okabe's, which... Was surprising, but we don't find out what happened with it. He just says it wasn't romantic. Uh, yeah, so, not like that you one. Know. Yeah, not definitely not like that one. We have a yeah. cute little moment where Kirisu's walking off, so that Okabe. I don't really understand why she walked away, like to to do all this. I guess it was just easier to do if she wasn't like physically there, but. 
you know, she, uh, I assume you just assumed this from context, but I looked it up to make sure. And when, uh, he turns around to grab the Dr. Pepper, she says, uh, Daisuke, I think, which means I love you in Japanese. Uh, yeah, that's what that's the, what the lip assume. reading was. Yeah, I assumed it was I love you, but I I knew the lips yeah. didn't line up with that because she only said like one word. Uh, but yeah, but I think that was what the it was something that started with a D. Uh, mm. Yeah, and now. At the very end of this, with like the, I think this, is this the one? Yeah, because he's oh, about to. Oh, wait, I just, re- the fucking phone call you said was to Daru, it was to Okabe. What? Where, uh, fucking Suzuha calls, uh. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no! And then the oh for the leap where fucking Kurisu bust in. Oh yeah, that was oh, so that... sad. She didn't get to finish saying it. Yeah. Oh, that that broke me. See, in my like head cannon for Steins Gate, and I'm pretty sure how it actually works is that that Okabe is still there, so him and that Kurisu get to live it out together. Well, you. That'd just be so sad, though. Like, do you think she could live with the guilt of knowing that, like, she lived and Myrie died just for their love? Yeah, because she would also know that that they're going to save it in another world line. Watch Tonight's Gate Zero. Um, anyways, so now, after all this shit, Suzuha comes back and and the time machine, and she's like, hey... We 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 can't we can't do this like we that Mayuri is uh you know Mayuri is great and all but she's not gonna prevent World War Three uh shit's gonna get really bad so he goes back he try and now we're back in episode one basically and yeah. we we get to recall why uh. We we get the throwback all the way to episode one where she pulls him out of the classroom and is like, "Hey, why were why, why yeah. were you? What the fuck were you trying to say to me earlier?" And it's like, "Oh shit, we've come full circle. This is yeah. this is intense." And then Okabe, being himself, he fails to save her the first time. Uh, he actually ends up killing her himself. Yeah, which, which oh, Jesus fucking was, Christ! Every geez. every time it just gets so much worse for him. Yep. He like tries. Now he has now he has indirectly caused Mayuri's death in one of these instances, and he has directly caused Kirisu's death in another. And it's he's he gives up basically, yeah. and it takes a motivational pep talk from none other than Yo In Kyoma to 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 motivate him and I'm like this is this is so fucking cool that this dumbass has to talk himself into fucking doing this. Yeah. I I really liked the the video on his phone of him fucking 33 years old larping his own goddamn save the universe plan out. Um yeah. I also I also like that the the phone video. I like that that was also a callback to uh, episode 1 as well. Yeah. Um, I, Oh, it's all very it's, well planned out. It's yeah, it's great. And then he's got to go back and redo it one last time. And mm-hmm. so he grabs all his little supplies. From oh, oh! Can the, we say future we didn't? We didn't talk about why Okabe had to ended up killing Kurisu though. Uh, how I like mean, a, how her dad's a fucking piece of shit. I, uh, yeah, but like, you know, oh, cut. dads That's, will be dads. Yeah, the dad that was giving the presentation, um, on Doctor. time travel. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy. Um, cause Kurisu was there actually to give him her own plans for practical time travel or world blind jumping, which they have been doing. And uh, he was super jealous and wanted to end up stealing them, and, and a fit of rage uh, assaulted both of them. 
Yeah. Or, yeah. It's so. Uh, Okabe picks up his like shit that he basically like told him because he lets him know like, hey, there's a way to do this. Um, w- like two things need to happen. One, the the time machine plans need to burn, and two, uh, you need to see Kirisu laying down in blood. Um, so he goes and grabs some fucking red liquid shit that he had laying around, and mm-hmm. um, he goes in. He grabs his he grabs the metal upa that's going to end up setting off a metal detector. No, no, I no, thought no, that he, was a... no. He gets the plastic upa. Because the metal one set off the no, metal detector the, that the saved Okabe the plans. That, the Okabe that we're talking about, he gets the metal one and oh, makes, yeah, yeah. to make sure that other Okabe doesn't get it. Because that oh, Okabe wow. is the one that's going to give it to Mayuri. And yeah, then it gets caught up with the file because she loses it. Oh yeah, because they see it it's, in the show. Yeah. So uh, he gets it and yeah, we end up uh, just he 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 fucks it up again though because uh, it turns up his like red shit that he got his little light up sword. Uh, the liquid was all dried up because he hadn't used it in so long, so he was not going to be able to use that to mimic blood. So instead, he taunts Kirisu's dad, who pulls out the knife into fucking like stabbing him in the stomach, like. Holy fucking shit. It's like, oh no, this is uh this is not good. But you know, it works. The the file falls on the ground, he ends up digging deeper into his wound to put more blood in on the ground, and then puts mm. her face down in it, which seems like a really bad idea, because like she could drown in the pool of blood, like face True. down in it. But yeah. you know, I guess what happens but like this is a really fucking cool resolution uh right here to like resolve it this is like it's it's creative it's it's there's no way that you could predict this was how this was gonna fucking resolve like this is super intricate super cool um i love all of this and you know it it works he, they go back. Uh, the world line is saved. We get a cool little like outro where we get to see everyone, and then he meets up with Kirisu in the end, and is like, "Hey, thanks for saving my life." And then he calls her his assistant, and she, despite not knowing him at all, is doing the cute little. Uh, How many times do I have to tell you not to call my assistant? And we yeah. end on that. Yeah. And it's honestly oh. it's 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 a cool ending. It's I'm I, I would have I know you really love JoJo's, but I cannot tell you how much I would have hated it if they did like a where they are now thing like they did at the fucking end of JoJo's <laughs> part two. It, it goes <laughs> with it, were, man. Like, Okabe grows on to be a fucking scientist that solves cancer. Like this <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, the OVA is like a small one, but that's about it. It's a, it's, it's sort. That's it's one a, thing. The OVA is optional. It's like, it's. Also, yeah. I think the OVA only existed because there was like a video game DLC that included that part as like a bonus. Cute, love that. But no, yeah, but, I really, I really like the ending to Steins Gate. That's why I'm like super upset I didn't actually finish it. Whenever I did, it's really like oh. that's when your payoff is. You can't just jerk yourself off for fucking six hours and then not come. And that's, that's true. sort of what you did. That's I, that's I guess that's sort of what I did. Blue balls yourself. Yeah, it's all right. The eventual but, uh, release was worth it. Now we've got some characters to talk about. We have we've spent a good minute on this, but let's talk about some characters. Uh all right by me. I love I love all of them. Even all even right. even poor little Daru. He's he's fucking mm-hmm. weird, but like he's he's got some funny moments. The 
voice actor for him, at, at least in the sub. I don't know about the dub, but at least in the sub is quite literally just perfect. It's exactly how I I would expect someone that looks like that to talk. <laughs> he sounds like a fucking, like, he, he just sounds like Daru. Um, yeah. All of them, they're, they're interesting. I care about them. They gave me, like, reasons to care about them. They're, they're all great, yeah. especially my waifu, Kirisu, my, yeah. my number one waifu of any anime. She is just so good. Little, little girl genius. That's fair. I like that, um, really no character is actually, like, not used like every person like every character in the cast is like relatively vital to what in some aspect to what's uh actually happening in the show yeah there's like there's hardly anyone other than like the the pen badge guy and like the the soup shop ladies there's hardly anyone that even talks in the anime that isn't essential to the story in some way yeah, yeah. I uh, uh I I I like Daru. He actually makes me laugh. Um uh, but I I laugh at degenerate things. I don't like think what he says is like actually okay. But <laughs> I just you can't you can't <laughs> do that to Mayuri. She's too like no, there's no, there's she's a line. Too pure. You can't there's mess a, with There's with a line. Mayuri. He likes to cross the line a little bit. Um, I like my area a lot. Um, I, I, yeah, I didn't get sad having to watch her die and stuff, but I still thought like she was like a good character and I enjoyed like her time on screen and I did, I felt bad for Okabe, like having to go through all of this and the, like the only person that he could really turn to, he has to re, reconvince every single time that he needs like, to let it out like hey i've been doing this for a hot second i need your help on this one and it's like yeah to do that so you know curious is great too um i didn't like love ferris but i enjoyed like i enjoyed that she was actually like necessary to the story uh i surprisingly actually you keep, you keep calling you keep referencing these names like they're they're fucking carnival rides ferris teeter it's it's john titer and ferris bite me uh ferris wheel and teeter totter over here yeah i guess uh, i guess make fun of the way i talk then um but no i also really like suzaha and like having her come back they're um for the end segment was really nice because I was I was actually I got more sad about Suzaha's death than anybody's. Well, yeah, hers was irreversible because she was going back with no fuel to to get yeah. home, and she was she was, she was trying to live it out. From... She, she was trying so hard, like she was on a mission, and like she would have completed her mission, but she wanted to like stop by and see her dad. And yeah, just, it's. It was also really really cute how she, like, kept her bike all those years. Yeah. Like, she took it with her in there, and, Mm -hmm. yeah, that was, that was nice. It was pleasant. Nice touch. Uh, I think I already, I already touched on my favorite characters and moments throughout there, but, uh, how about, how about you? What's... Um, favorite, uh, characters, um, probably Suzaha, um, to be honest with you uh probably stand out for me um moments um big oh shit moment in episode one with the first world line drop or jump um the ending i really really like the ending um to steins gate i also liked them actually like like the those episodes where they're figuring out and just kind of bantering back and forth, um, you know, the main main cast on the actual workings of the microwave and the bananas and what 
what they really got going on there. Uh, oh, we forgot whole... to touch on it also, but I thought it was really cool in the last two episodes how they used the second half of the introductory song as the intro. Mm-hmm. As it, it, it's like it's just new, like lyrics are like different, but we have that same sort of theme song, and it's like I don't know. It was really cool. It, it uh, yeah, I liked that. Interesting. Yeah. Like, not to have a complete song change, just to use that second half. But, uh... That's fair. Because, I mean, you're not changing the story, you're just changing where you are in it. So that that is a very nice touch. Yeah. So, let's, uh... Any, any final thoughts you want to throw out here? Alright, I've waited, um... All show to say this. Um... I kind of like ReZero more than Steins Gate. And I think they're pretty comparable in the uh in a lot of what's really going on in the show. I like both of them a lot. Um but just emotionally I think that ReZero does a little bit more and plus you get to spend a little bit more time with the characters since we get more than twenty twenty four episodes. I haven't watched Steins Gate Zero. So if I watch that my feelings might change. You're gonna lose us so many listeners with that um, that's, I would like that's to fine. say I I do not think ReZero is better. Steins I don't know. Gate. I think it's more I, heart touching, but I I, I think, I think Steins Gate's very good. I think it's very much worth watching if you haven't watched it at all, or if you're like slowly getting through it, you should just buckle down and just watch you, watch the full thing. With a straight face, can you tell me that that? Subaru and Amelia are better than Okabe and Karisu. I don't watch ReZero for the waifus. This isn't about the waifus. We're talking about the two main characters versus the two main characters. And I want some opinions here. Um, You're going to come in here with some bold takes. I I personally prefer Subaru to Okabe. Yes. Uh, Amelia to Karisu. That's a tough one. They're about equal in my book, to be honest. They're both queens. These so are some bad takes. I I I prefer a weeb uh that is gonna just try to own own into the cringiness. Um and Okabe is a mad scientist that owns into the cringiness, but weeb greater than mad scientist. No, that, you're you're really making me want to say it. You're, you're making me want to say it. Say what? Yu-Gi-Oh's better than JoJo's. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I mean, Dark Magician I... is cooler than uh, uh, Star Platinum. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can Dark Magician stop time? I think. He can kill Time Wizard, so probably. Oh, that's another thing we didn't touch touch on in Steins Gate. During the fucking death loop um, scenes with Mayuri, every time she was about to die, how time just literally broke. Yeah, that was That was awesome. That was super yeah. cool. I love that. But, uh... Let's have the the moment of truth here. What are you going to give uh, Steins Gate out of 10? Out of 10, I'm going to give Steins Gate 8 future laboratory gadgets out of 10, which is also, uh, for reference, uh, the exact same ranking that I have for 0. I double-checked. So ranking-wise, they're the same. It's just personal. Only 8 out of 10? Only an 8 out of 10. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Steins Gate ten dead Myuris out of ten. Dead Myuris? Yep. Is that how many times she died in the show? Uh, probably more, honestly. I think yeah. there were some time leaps that he did that we didn't get that were supposed to be like implied. That yeah, we just didn't that's... have to watch for the sake of like <laughs> For the sake of time. Yeah, and, and probably probably some viewer sanity as well. 
Yeah. But yeah, I mean there there's we still have our eleventh living Mayuri happy in the world line. So that's, that's true. I can spare ten to give the Steins Gate. <laughs> yeah, well uh thankfully it uh it appears as if we have reached the Steins Gate. We have uh, Step out of it and put this behind us until Steins Gate Zero. Or Re Zero. <laughs> Ooh. Difficult to cover that one. Yeah. I, I can't take much more Steins Gate slander on this podcast. I'm not slandering them. They're both very good shows, and I find it funny that you hate Re Zero so much because they're done by the same studio. Oh, I don't hate Re. I don't hate Re Zero. I just think it is a a horrific claim to, to say that Re Zero is better than Steins Gate. On my for my own personal taste, yes. I prefer a fantasy setting over a sci fi setting. But I like both genres. No, you can prefer I, I'm usually not too uh drawn into sci fi settings. Actually, but it's just oh really everything about this so just this seems so this is just like a real like special gem for you. Yeah, I mean, I liked Doctor Stone up to the point where I stopped watching it. Uh, where just, where'd you stop watching Doctor Stone? I think like episode eighteen. Uh, oh, I just figured oh, I was just you... gonna read it. I was just oh, gonna that's, read the rest of that. It. That's fine. Um, there's not a lot of action happening in there, and I can just read it faster and then catch up quicker. Yeah, no, I actually really like Doctor Stone a lot, to be honest. I I do want to read the manga. I feel like it it will just be faster, but I have all of season two to watch, so I might just do that since I'll probably finish with the show we're watching next week, Love Chinubio and Other Delusions, pretty fast. I uh, like that show I'm a lot. Excited. I'm excited yeah. to see what happens with Eye Patch Girl. I love Rika. Rika's so cute. Uh, I love her a, sister. She is what a dork. Yep. Don't worry. I won't call you out um, for your taste uh, in that matter. But if people want to reach well, you, you share um, that taste. <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, but if people want to reach you, uh, where can they reach you, Jacob? If you want to reach me. Uh, you can find me at Tasteful Topix on Twitter. Um, you can also check me out on Twitch sometime at twitch.tv slash Bambi Rapture underscore. And if people want to come at you for these bold opinions on Steins Gate, where can they reach you, Alex? If you want to come to me for my completely reasonable opinions and comparisons of Steinga- Steins Gate, uh, you can reach me at Twitter at Nighthouse or uh, youtube.com uh, slash creampuff. Um, of course, you can always message the uh, Annie Buddies podcast at Twitter at Buddies Annie. Um, either one of us will respond, and if you have any viewer requests or just want to tell us that our opinions are garbage, you can just shoot us a DM or make a tweet. Any engagement? Good engagement. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, take care, everybody. Uh, see you all next time. <laughs>